Welcome to the shape unit and here's a little teaser to get you in the mood. Egyptian pyramid, a mountain large against the sky, or a sign to yield as we walk by. Maybe a ramp that we can jump, pointy goatee beard or a punk, a megaphone so we can chat, or a happy birthday party hat. What can you make with all these shapes? What can you make with all these what can you make with all these shapes? What can you make with all these shapes? Little square magnet on my fridge If we tip you over just a smidge You could be a diamond till you land Or a box of pizza for the band You could be a window or a tooth A CD case for Sonic Youth a picture frame or a saltine So obviously, uh, we're going to talk about shape. This is the next Arts 102 unit, and we're going to talk a little bit about how you can make them and what you can do with them and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, buy the album if you want it. They have good stuff. <laughs> and uh, let's talk about shape. So basically, shape is just an enclosed object, more or less created by line or by color and value changes which define their edges 
and shape can be positive or negative. In your assignment, you're going to be trying to play with that idea, the positive or negativity of it. Um, design is essentially the arrangement of shapes. That's basically what we do, even with uh, text or images, it's the arrangement of shapes. And like I said, the figure ground relationship is something you're going to be playing with. It refers to the relationship between the foreground and the background elements and their interplay. The figure is almost always perceived as nearer to the viewer. This in essence is the same as positive and negative space. And my hope and dream for all of you for this assignment is to um, kind of create some ambiguity between the figure and the ground. So here's some categories of shapes. We got rectilinear, which basically just means kind of squarish sh sort of shapes. Straight lines that intersect to form geometric shapes. That's a rectilinear shape. Uh, curvilinear, probably not too hard to guess. That's going to be curved lines that intersect to form geometric shapes. Organic, those are shapes that resemble objects found in nature. Pretty straightforward. Amorphous shapes, a little weird. Uh, this is a type of shape that is without shape or seems to be without boundaries. Good examples of amorphous shapes are things like clouds and nebulae and things like that. A symbol. This is a type of shape that communicates ideas or meanings beyond its literal form and all visual communication is ultimately symbolic. The red stapler in office space is a good example of a symbol. It's not just a red stapler in this movie. This represents something in this movie, something else. Think about that. See if you can deduce what this is symbolizing. An icon is like a symbol uh, in a sense, but it's a symbol that has entered popular consciousness such that it carries an immediate association or a universal meaning. And by the way, there's a hierarchy to this, um, and it works like this. All icons are symbols, and all symbols are shapes. But it does not work the other way around. Not all shapes are symbols, and not all symbols are icons. So keep that in mind, just one way to think of it. But, uh, and this is also not to be confused with program icons like you would find in your start menu or your dock on OS. Um, these are a specific type of shape that are universally known. Rendering styles and how they work from most to least realistic. These are some different render rendering styles. Um, I can never pronounce this correctly, so if there's a French speaker in the audience, I'm sure you'll cringe and cry at my horrible pronounce, pr pronunciation of this. Trompe is a method of rendering in a highly realistic manner in modern context. might be referred to as photorealistic. So basically you can see here a photorealistic painting. Not one of mine, as it were, because I'm not capable of this. And you're not expected to be either, so don't, I hope you didn't just drain all the color out of your face. Naturalistic. Um, this is a type of imagery that successfully imitates the illusion of three-dimensional space and contour, also referred to as realism. So basically a realistic rendering, but maybe not photorealistic. And distortion is kind of the opposite of naturalism. It's an intentional alteration to the forms of nature, often manipulating conventional proportions. This type of rendering is often used to emphasize certain features and downplay others. For example, caricatures. Those are a form of distortion. Abstraction is a rendering style that reduces natural shapes to their most basic character, albeit still recognizable. And that's sort of a, uh, a loosely defined term, but um, if you look up some Picasso images, you'll see what I mean. You'll see some abstracted shapes that you understand what it is you're looking at. 
Non-objective has no reference to reality whatsoever or refers to nothing but itself. The only subject matter is pure visual design. Um, Non-objective, our term is a specific meaning, and in common speech you often hear non-objective referred to as abstract. Um, in terms of Arts 102, not technically correct. Abstract has a particular meaning, and so does non-objective. Thank you for listening.